People always ask me what they can see in one day in old San Juan. The truth is, a lot. We're gonna walk around this 500 year old city. We're gonna do a complete circle around the city, actually. We're gonna stop along the way. We've got some great historical sites, including El Morro, San Cristobal. We're gonna stop for some piragua, which is a local street favorite. Also, we're gonna have lunch at one of the most famous Puerto Rican restaurants in Old San Juan. We're gonna finish all this off on the rooftop, one of my favorite rum barrel houses. So let's get started. Bam. This area is the cruise ship docks. It's a little cloudy this morning and rainy. The forecast said no rain and sunshine, but that's uh, why you don't actually look at the forecast here. You just assume it's gonna have a chance of rain with some sunshine as well. But on the other side of the cruise ship docks, as you can see, this now called the Hotel Rumbao used to be the Sheraton. There's a Walgreens in the bottom of it. I'm pretty sure that every cruise ship port in the world has a Senor Frogs, which is right behind me here. Also, I think it's important to note that this is one of the greatest cruise ship ports I've ever been to. And I've been all around the Caribbean. I've sailed on a small fiberglass yacht from Florida to Puerto Rico, actually. This port has everything and of course it's US currency there's no passport required it's just an amazing place so as we keep walking here you're gonna see this is the ferry terminal so you can take this ferry for 50 cents each way to Catania which is across the bay we're gonna get a better look at that in a minute on the other side of the road we also have CVS as well as the Walgreens back there at the hotel. Of course, there's a subway here, but all of the best shopping, stores, restaurants, bars, etc., are going to be just up around this corner here. So the shops are gonna be straight down through here uh, where there's uh, the Paseo Princesa, which is the way we're gonna go. But if you turn right, there's a parking garage. That's where I parked because obviously I drove here. But of course, if you're coming by taxi or cruise ship, then you're most likely going to start in this area. So at the end of this tour, we're actually going to stop at Scryer Barrel House. They have a rooftop bar and a cigar lounge, great rum cocktails, and it's a very up and coming kitschy place here in Old San Juan. And that's where we're going to end the tour. I think that's a good idea. It might be a little too early to start drinking rum. Well, then again, Maybe not, can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. But here we are, so this is the Boricua sign as we're coming in. And as you can see, this is the beginning of the shopping district, La Casita here, which is actually, if you've ever seen the movie Captain Ron, this was the film location for the Dutch island St. Hag. It was their visitor center in the movie. And uh, I would say that was a movie that somewhat inspired me to jump on a sailboat and start exploring. It's actually really quiet. It's like 78 degrees. It's the second week in February. And I particularly came on this day, it's a Monday. Now a lot of the, the footage I'm showing also on this walking tour was from last Monday when I was here. It was actually 89 degrees and sunny again the first week of february and uh, today it's supposed to be around 85 they said partly cloudy it's supposed to clear up so i'm taking advantage of the uh the nice cloud cover here to give my tube of sunscreen a break i think it's hot from the friction of being used so much here Of 
course, during the day, there are several food trucks here, as well as different kiosks. Uh, we're going to be looking for a Piragua cart as we get up closer to Castillo El Morro, so we can get some shaved ice with tropical fruit-flavored syrup. Ooh, off in the distance I see a meaito tree, which is the African tulip tree. So this is the, uh, the beginning of the shopping area. It's only open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some days it is just full of shopping kiosks and other days just a few. Across from the street from that is La Puntilla. This is an outdoor parking area. They charge for parking by the day and it's usually about five dollars per car but it's right here in the center of everything which is great so as you can see we get a little panoramic view we just came from the cruise ship dock yes very exciting so we're going to be passing by the very famous area which is the cathedral san juan batista that is the permanent resting place where the first governor puerto rico ponce de leon is uh, permanently entombed but uh, so as I mentioned this is the uh, Paseo Princesa of course you can see the walled city all around of course at one point this wall completely surrounded the the city of Old San Juan originally it was the Castillo San Felipe Amorro and that was a Spanish stronghold of course, for the Spanish treasure and everything coming from Latin America back then. And pretty much impenetrable fortress that was built over 250 years. And as it grew, then of course they built San Cristobal, which we are also going to see on this journey. And, uh, and as I mentioned, there were actually three lines of defense for the wall. So the first line of defense, oh, I should back up and say that Old San Juan is actually an island. So when you first come onto the island on the right, there's Escambron Beach, which is a great place. You'll see some surfers. Here's our little friend here. What's happening, my guy? Um, but yes, that's a great place for surfing. Also snorkeling. There's a dive shop there. You can actually scuba dive. It's a great place to learn to scuba as well. But in that area, there's an old part of the wall as well. So that was the first line of defense. And then the second line of defense was around San Cristobal. But this building right here is so important in the history of the island. So La Princesa actually used to be a prison. And uh, back in the 1950s, there was a, a revolution, an uprising to try and gain independence. And actually, uh, the US government and the FBI, they were you know, very, uh, very harsh with these people and they were handing out life sentences and 20 year prison sentences for flying the Puerto Rican flag, which is terrible. But inside this building is where they housed a lot of these uh, prisoners. And yes, yeah, so you can tour that if you walk inside. Over here, this is uh, the Roble, beautiful blooming Roble. Actually, that's the first one I've seen blooming so far this spring. But as I mentioned, you can walk inside. They have uh, tourist information. You can also grab some. Hola, buen día. So I just talked to the uh, security, the nice security lady back there, and she said that actually the passage between the fountain behind me, which is the Fountain Raices, beautiful. And of course you can see it in this footage here from when I was here last Monday. But she said that that passage is actually closed. So there's a, there's a path that goes around El Morro and it's called the Paseo del Morro. And it's a great walking path and it starts here and goes all the way around the front of Castillo El Morro. But anyway, she was saying that um, because of the high surf right now that's happening on the north coast, which is very common in the winter time, so if you come here to visit, 
to escape winter, say, in the United States, then please be cautious of that. As I mentioned, Escambrón Beach, that's actually a great place that's protected and normally does not have uh, waves that are quite so big. But today, she said that that part of the passage is actually closed because of the high waves crashed in there and it damaged the tree that's around here. So actually, I'll have to come back and see what happened with that. So these things do happen here on a tropical island, of course, and we have to be mindful about that. So be careful, of course, where you visit, especially in winter time. So now, instead of passing by the fountain and going around that way and up through La Puerta de San Juan, because she actually said La Puerta is closed. We're going to come in from the other side. We're still going to see it. It's a very important historical part of this city, one of the four original gates to old San Juan the walled city but instead we're just going to come up this way okay so here we are we're back where we started when we were walking down the Paseo Princesa so instead we came from this area this is where the cruise ship docks were and back here is where the fountain is and then now we're going to head up these steps So always everything is in bloom here, but coming up shortly, we're going to have a lot more trees and flowers in bloom as we head into spring, especially the flamboyant, the most beautiful tree on the island with orange, yellow, and red blossoms. Absolutely gorgeous, the Banco Popular building. And so yes, so now this is the, the other route. So now we're just going up the wall instead of around the base and then up. The beautiful cobblestone streets. Another flower lined street. And again, we're just uh, working our way up the hill. I don't know if you can tell that in the video, but we're on an incline. As you can see, now we're elevated from the cruise ship dock. Here, of course, the constant repair of the old city wall which is constantly being repaired and improved. Keep it lasting for hundreds of years more. It's already been 500 years. This is Tetuan Street, also where Scryer Barrel House Rum is, but it's down on that end of the street. So there's some cleaning going on today, some pressure washing as always. As I mentioned, some repairs, but here we have a great view. This is really where old San Juan begins to come alive. So again, just another part of the walled city. Back here we can see where the cruise ship docks were, the ferry port. Of course, these are called garitas or sentry boxes where the soldiers used to look out. And then over here on this side, this is the Catano area. So in fact, the distillery for Bacardi is right over there in Catano. Also, you can take the ferry across the harbor and uh, they usually have some live music and activities on the weekends. There's a nice restaurant over there called Don Tejo, Mexican with margaritas, which is very good. Also, I think they're affiliated with Don Taco, which we'll see as well, which is also a very nice restaurant. 
But the, uh, the original Spanish settlement, so on Columbus's second voyage in 1493, is actually when they discovered Puerto Rico. And from that time, they, the original settlement was in an area of San Juan called Caparra, which is actually over there. And it wasn't until later that they moved the settlement into this area, which we're going to see in just a moment. But originally, this port was called Puerto Rico, which makes sense. And the island was called San Juan. And then when they moved the settlement from over in Capara to here in Old San Juan, then they switched the names. They called the port San Juan and the island Puerto Rico. This restaurant here is Barra China. That building is the birthplace of the Pina Colada. Also has an open air courtyard. This is the smallest house in San Juan. Say tacos! Tacos! <laughs> tacos. <laughs> Excuse me. But yes, the, uh, the smallest house in San Juan. They used to give tours. I heard they're not giving tours right now, but I'm going to try and get in there and tour that. So this building right here was built because there was a horse race down this street and the horse and the rider went off the edge of this cliff. And so they both survived, apparently. And uh, because of the miracle, But as you can see, it's a pretty far drop down there. So, to honor the miracle, they built this holy building right here. Over here is also the Parque Palomas, so that's where you feed the pigeons. They normally open at night. Oh, that's right, they're closed on Mondays. But if you like doing that, it's not really for me, but it's a beautiful little park, especially if you want to feed the pigeons. This is the Calle del Cristo. Across the street here is also Anitas, so that's a great place for some gelato. Highly recommend stopping in there. And for all you ladies out there, there's a coach store right up here on the left corner. And for the gentlemen, while the ladies are in the coach store, or maybe you like coach things as well, and you just want to have a cigar and some scotch. In that moment, there's also Casa de Monte Cristo. Now this is a, a well-known Monday spot. It's one of the places that's open on Monday that is recommended drinks and cigars. So yes, Casa de Monte Cristo, gentlemen, come get your cigars here. And then of course, the coach factory outlet. This is the Cathedral San Juan Batista, the oldest, second oldest cathedral in the Americas. Caleta, also a popular place for some food. Now 
Now this street here, between the cathedral and La Puerta de San Juan, which was, as I mentioned, one of the original four gates to the city and the only remaining gate. But sailors, when they would cross the Atlantic, following the trade winds from the east and the Atlantic high pressure system that moves boats to the Caribbean, up the Atlantic seaboard of the United States, and then back across the Atlantic to Europe, when they would make uh, port here in San Juan and come through La Puerta, they would walk up to the church to give thanks for a safe passing. And as you can see right here, these older, simple buildings that are, of course, some of them 500 years old. These were the original Spanish settler homes when they moved into this area. Of course, we have our friends here as well, but just gorgeous, especially after a a rain like today, this is really spectacular. This is the Caleta de San Juan. Up at the top of this road is also El Convento, which was uh, formerly for the convent for nuns, now a hotel. But as you can see, they have the uh, La Puerta de San Juan closed off for today because of the what they call Marea Alta, the high tide. What's well, back behind me here? That is the governor's mansion, Fortaleza, the oldest continuous government residence in the Western Hemisphere. Wow, this is really beautiful. This is actually uh, the perfect day. It's not too hot, not too sunny, just gorgeous. 80, 82 degrees. And we're coming up on another one of my favorite areas. As I mentioned, this walled city protected old San Juan from many attacks, mainly from the Dutch and from the English. And actually, uh, one of the most famous attacks led by Sir Francis Drake when the English attacked the local bishop, shown here in this sculpture, with the ladies of the town, came out to sing songs and carry torches through the streets to hopefully offer a blessing and protection from the looming attacks. But, in an interesting twist of fate, the English ships saw the lights of the, the torches and heard the people and mistakenly took them for Spanish reinforcements. And they fled and the attack was over. So that statue over there is a reminder of the vigilance and strength of the Puerto Rican people from the Taino to today. So as you can see down here, this is La Puerta de San Juan, so the gate. So the ships would come here and dock, enter the gate, check in with the city, walk up to the top of the hill, to the cathedral, safely in San Juan Harbor. I know I've mentioned Captain Ron before, but this is also the scene where they have the party in San Juan on the boat. If anybody's ever seen that movie, it's great. And here an even better image of Fortaleza. Obviously a great spot for a photograph. So, La Fortaleza, and then here is one of these garita, which is the sentry box where the soldiers would look for incoming ships. And these are all over old San Juan. It's really amazing, actually. You can see one 
over there as well. Everywhere you go in this city, there's one of these beautiful garitas, sentry boxes. And so many of them, you can go and look out just like this one. This is the Paseo del Morro that I was mentioning earlier, the path that goes all the way around Castillo El Morro. I don't know how many times I've said this, but this city is spectacular. And the people here are the most amazing people I've ever met. I, I've done a lot of traveling. I've crossed the Atlantic three times on a ship. I spent a total of a year traveling around Europe with a backpack. I've been all over the Caribbean from Aruba up to Grand Cayman, Mexico, Guatemala. And I've just never found a place as special as this with people so special, food that is so amazing. And of course, they've got some pretty good cocktails and nightlife here, which we're going to talk more about that later as the trip continues. But over here, this is uh, Isla de Cabra that you can start to see here. So this was an island. And if you look out there, there was a, a fort called Cañuela. And that was originally in the early days of El Morro so they could create a crossfire across the opening of the bay here for any incoming ships. And as El Morro grew and became more powerful with its cannon fire, that became obsolete. And then in the 1940s, the U.S. military dredged out this channel so it was deeper and they used that uh, ocean floor or the sand from the bottom to create this landmass so that now it's a peninsula instead of an island. And you can actually drive out there. It's called Isla de Cabras. You can drive out there and it's a recreational park now. But I was just looking over here and I was watching these waves. So normally this is like a beach, a beach area. You can't really access it, and I'm sure if you went down there, they would tell you to leave. But I have seen sailboats that come in here and anchor, and they're hanging out on this beach. But as you can see, the tide is so high, and I don't know if I can capture it here, but a minute ago, I saw a big rogue wave come in and just blast up on that wall. Right. We'll have to catch that another time. Hopefully not, though, because those rogue waves are dangerous for this island. Okay, so yes, so we're going to uh, make our way up towards El Morro. Ooh, actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's change our course. And we're gonna head up this way. Ooh, gorgeous. Look at this space. Comes a big ship out of the harbor. A couple jet skis. There's all kinds of activities like that. From stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, jet skis, you name it. Pretty much anything you can think of. And we continue our ascent up towards El Morro and actually that is the highest point of Old San Juan. Another garita or century box over there. So as we come up around this corner, I love this. This is Casablanca. This is the house of Ponce de Leon, although he never actually lived in it. He died before it was completed, but I'm told that his family had the house for 250 or 300 years. but also one of the most beautiful streets in Old San Juan. And we're gonna work our way up to Casablanca. This is the Calle del Sol. So the, the sunshine street. Absolutely amazing. But I believe that 
Casablanca is closed on Mondays, but we're going to find out. So far, since we started measuring, we've gone three quarters of a mile, which is just a nice walk. Buen día. beautiful blue cobblestone streets of old San Juan. This is one of the original streets. Some of them have been redone, but not as beautiful as the original. history, the beauty of this 500 year old city. And we just actually finished at the end of 2021 celebrating the 500 year anniversary. Pretty amazing so far, right? Yes, I uh, really just love walking the streets and just enjoying everything about this beautiful city and island. It's actually quite amazing to be on these streets with nobody here. As I mentioned, it's 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday. It's uh, second week of February. I'm already breaking out in the sweat here. It's kind of humid today, but the breeze is nice. It feels really good. And uh, yeah, it's always hot here. It's the endless summer, which I love. So I wouldn't trade it for anything. So this is the Casablanca. Which it looks like it's closed. I'm going to try and come back another time and uh, highlight this special place. It's beautiful on the inside. Very much as it was hundreds of years ago. Ah yes, Tuesday through Sunday. Maybe we'll come back tomorrow. Just gorgeous. And as you can see, up on the hill there, I see the lighthouse for El Morro. And that's where we're headed to next. Down at the end of this street is the Iglesia San Jose, built in 1539. And the plaza in front of the church is the statue of Ponce de Leon, the first governor of Puerto Rico. And in the statue, he's pointing towards Caparra, as I mentioned earlier. which was the original Spanish settlement. Of course, the concept of colonialism here is a little bit controversial. And last year, I think it was, maybe a little longer ago, they actually, uh, somebody blew up the statue. <laughs> so he survived, but he was blown off the base. They put him back up there and he's Probably going to be there until the next time somebody tries to blow them up. So, here we go. Ah, 
gorgeous. The old buildings that surround El Morro. And of course, the Atlantic Ocean. Gorgeous. See some white caps out there, but the variation and the color of the water is always spectacular. Even more so on the east coast by Luquillo Beach. Really amazing. I actually have a, a video also where I visited the rainforest. Ooh, and Luquillo Beach. There's a hummingbird. Let's see if we can get a close-up of this guy. There he is. Look at that. Wow. Amazing. The wonders of nature here in Old San Juan. It's spectacular. The Catorra Puerto Ricana, which is the Puerto Rican parrot, once so endangered there were less than 20 island wide. Now those numbers over a thousand for the parrot. And then of course here we are at El Morro. El Morro, as I mentioned, the first castle built by the Spanish. There's a dry moat around it, and if soldiers and attackers could actually reach that, then they were met with crossfire, both sides of the moat. It's, it's beautiful just to walk around the castle and see the grounds, the walled city. And as we approach Castillo San Felipe Amorro, we see the School of Arts here. There's always um, people selling hats and things like that. And of course, food, ice cream. And my favorite, which is piragua. Hola, buen día. Sí, uh, me da tamarindo. ¿Tiene tamarindo? Tamarindo, palomindo. Sí. <laughs> Exacto. Pues está bien, papi. Mira, ve, mira, mira, ve. Papi. Hoy tú lo ves. Tamarindo. Tamarindo, palomindo. Gracias, quédatelo. Gracias. 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 Buen día. So good. And what a nice, uh, nice gentleman that is right here in front of El Morro. So I guarantee you, no matter what time you come here, it's going to be hot when you visit El Morro. My recommendation is to visit the Piragua guy. Ah, so my battery is dying. I'm going to swap the battery out. And I'm going to finish this uh, delicious piragua de tamarindo. And we're going to continue this journey. We're going to go inside El Morro next. Explore the castle. Then we're going to head down the street, pass by one of the hottest nightlife spots, La Factoria. We're going to pass by one of the most photographed locations in Old San Juan. We're also going to get lunch at El Jibarito. And then we're going to visit the other castle, which is Castillo San Cristobal. So you can continue watching the video right now, right here.